Hello again, this is Beginner's Guide to GPG, Lesson 8, Revision and Extra. Revision. So the basic steps for using GPG are as follows. First step is you need to create a key pair with a secure passphrase. After creating your key pair, step two, you need to then share your public key with your contacts or to a key server. Step three is you need to meet up with your contacts and verify their keys using fingerprints. After you've verified their keys, you need to both sign their keys and set a trust level, uh, then exchange that key with that person. They would then ex uh, import the newly signed key and you would import the newly signed key they gave you as well. Step six is to avoid trusting public keys that you have not verified or signed yet. Uh, if a new public key comes out for someone and you don't have a revoked copy of the old one, um, you know, your alarm flag should go off. You shouldn't be trusting that new public key. You should find out what's going on with that person. You should use their old key. Or you should wait for them to contact you. Um, step eight is to always with GPG to make sure that you're signing your messages for integrity. Kind of weird that it lets you not uh, use the integrity, but hey, that's the way it is. It's a pretty old system. Step nine is to regularly check key servers for updates, see if people have revoked their key and released new ones. Step ten is to hold on to your own revocation certificate and probably keep a backup of that key pair uh, in case you lose it. So keeping all this in mind, you can see why GPG has poor usability and not many people use it. Um, if you're wealthy, you'd probably just get an IT guy to do it for you, handle your key for you. Good encryption practices. Encrypted communications can be easy to break if they are not applied properly. The following advice will help you mitigate against common attacks that affect GPG. First one is don't be predictable. If an attacker can guess some of the content of your encrypted messages, then it might be easier for them to decrypt them. So keeping this in mind, we would avoid pleasantries. We wouldn't say hello, GPG school or hello, Emin, and we wouldn't say sincerely, whatever your name was. You would just keep that out. You would keep it really blunt. Second thing is to, you wouldn't send HTML emails. HTML web code has predictable text, so don't do that. Just send plain emails. Don't add signatures. Uh, if you have a signature in all of your messages, it's really bad. Don't do it. Also, don't quote previously encrypted text. So if someone sends you some text by GPG and you reply to them, make sure to delete that text and not send it back to them. It's kind of annoying because with Enigmail, uh, and Thunderbird set up by default, it um, it appends previous conversations to the bottom. That's wrong, you should be getting rid of that. <sighs> Another step is to not encrypt email content multiple times. That's kind of related to the first point, really. Um, if you encrypt something, if you use GPG encryption multiple times, uh, on a on a piece of data, um, it can make it easier to decrypt actually. So just use GPG once and use it with a strong cipher, which is pretty much the default. Now it's version two. Um, avoid holding on to unencrypted versions of encrypted text. If you encrypt documents, uh, don't hold on to the unencrypted text. Obviously, it's dangerous. Shred that, and only keep the encrypted version. Sending garbage. Uh, if you were to generate like huge blocks of ASCII and random numbers and symbols and stuff, and then you were to jam that in every single, generate a new block for every single message, uh, that would basically add a lot of strength uh, to your GPG if you were to send garbage. Finally, uh, don't encrypt content from non-trusted sources. So if you get a new GPG contact, one that you haven't verified yet, uh, they could be an attacker. They could be a random person you've never even met. They might not be the person you think they are. They could send you some text. You could then send that to a contact that you have verified, number two, and that would um, that might allow them to decrypt the message. 
knowing that you've sent that text to a verified contact. So yeah, only send data once if you can. <clears throat> Use steganography. It is possible to actually hide the fact that you're using GPG. You can hide encrypted text in an image file or an audio file. Steghide is a program for Linux that allows you to apply another round of encryption and, com and compression before subtly hiding that text in an image file. Hiding your encrypted content in a whole series of photos would make it harder for attackers to actually see that you're using GPG in the first place. To get Steghide, you just on Ubuntu and Debian and Linux Mint, uh, you would use sudo apt-get install Steghide. Once you've done that, you're free to use it. Uh, here are two examples of it being used. First, to embed a text into an image, and you're prompted for a passphrase, of course, and then your and then the second example is extracting that text from the image later on. Um, yeah, you will either need to send them the password via GPG or some other method. Moving along, activity 20, encrypt a message, then embed the message file into a random photo using steganography. Then extract it again. Don't forget to write down the password. I've written down a password here, so let's give that a spin in the virtual machine. Here we see we've got two files, one photo of a really pretty kitty. We're going to get a GPG message and jam it inside this cat photo. Here is the unencrypted text we have. Uh, this is my initial message. Let's put a smiley face in there too, just for fun. All right, first step is to do GPG encryption on that message. So we are gonna go, yep, that command there. GPG2 armor encrypt as well as sign this message text uh, with Bill Hammersley's public key. So that's actually one that I've got. So I'm basically encrypting it only for myself. It would also be possible to you, for you to encrypt it so that only someone else could decrypt it and you yourself could not decrypt it. Take note, once we click that, it'll happen automatically because it just uses my public key that I've already got. Here we see, sweet. The encrypted text that we've created. So now we've done that, we want to basically shred the unencrypted text. I've done all these commands previously, so I'll be pressing up a lot. Okay, that's deleted. So now we've only got an encrypted message and a cat photo. So let's stick the encrypted message inside the cat photo. Awesome, right? Here we go. So this basically Steg hide embed that text into kitty photo dot jpeg kitty photo won't actually move it'll stay where it is enter the passphrase i type in my other passphrase that i've made just to use steganography Done. So now we've seen the image got refreshed just then because the image changed a tiny bit. Now if we look at the cat photo, it looks exactly the same, but trust me, inside there, there is an encrypted message waiting to be read. Awesome, right? So let's strip the, let's encrypt the other file as well. Yeah, this one. So we'll digitally shred. So now we've only got the cat photo. With the cat photo, I'm going to uh, de-steganography it to get the GPG message, and then I'm going to decrypt that GPG message, and then we're going to have our original message back again. So it'll basically show you how it works. So all we've got is our kitty photo now. Let's extract that image. I mean that text, sorry. <clears throat> Enter the passphrase. Extracted data successfully. Sweet. And here we see our GPG message again. Awesome, right?
Yeah, you can hide GPG messages inside kitty photos. Oh yeah, awesome. <sighs> okay, um, I remember what the actual final password is. It's just GPG2 and then .txt.asc. Yeah, so we're prompted for Bill's GPG key now. So I'm gonna type that in. This one's a bit more complex. Although I suppose your um, steganography key should also be sufficiently complex. Oh, I hope I typed it right. Yes, I did. Sweet. So, finally, we see our original message that we created. Woohoo! You remember that, right? So yeah, it's basically how steganography works. You can hide all the encrypted content you want inside kitty photos, and then just chill. Yeah, that's good. All right, moving back to the lecture. <clears throat> email providers. The whole point we use GPG is because I wouldn't trust any email provider, any free email provider on this planet. I wouldn't trust them at all. Uh, they're all giving that conversation data to someone else. This is exactly why we use GPG. Because we know the providers aren't trustworthy. That being said, there is one that seems somewhat trustworthy, ProtonMail, although they did say in one of their blogs that if you were an Edward Snowden type that you shouldn't use their service, you should use some other technology as well, like GPG. Moving along, GPG on Android, it's possible to get GPG messaging on Android. I'm not sure if it's a secure platform compared to Linux. It's very likely that it's not. You'd probably want to go for an open source phone, even though they don't really exist yet, besides perhaps Ubuntu phone. But if you are going to do GPG on Android, this is basically how you do it. First step, you would install Ftroid, which is an open source software library for Android. So it gives you lots of copy left uh, GPL programs on there. You would then install from Fdroid, you would install K9Mail and Open Keychain. Uh, Open Keychain is like, it's kind of like Enigmail and K9Mail is kind of like Thunderbird, but it's mobile obviously and the interfaces are gonna be different. So you're gonna have to figure it out on your own, but the steps would be exactly the same as they would have been in this tutorial. Is there something easier? God damn it, GPG is hard. I really don't expect the majority of people in my life to ever use it. But what if there was something that the people in my life could use? Because it was much, much simpler. Um, there is something like that. It's a GPL software called Signal. Uh, it was basically a combination of two programs, one called TechSecure and another called Redphone, that were also open source. Um, and Signal basically combined them into a private messaging sort of platform that was larger. You can get it on both the Google Play and the App Store. There's also Libre Signal available in Fdroid. This is really, really great because most people aren't able to use GPG and they can use this instead. Other open source mobile apps, SureSpot, ChatSecure, Libre Signal, which has got the same icon as Signal, uh, Contalk and Antox all deserve a mention. They're all GP, GPL 2 or 3. Um, yeah. If you, if you want to try the other private messaging apps that are out there, there's, there's quite an ecosystem of them forming. Finally, Web of Trust. Let's say you have Adam and you have Bill. Now they've verified and signed each other's keys. And then Bill goes on holiday, so only Adam's around. Charlie then wants to start using GPG with Bill too, but he can't because uh, Bill is on holiday. And Charlie is a stranger and he doesn't really recognize Bill's voice over the phone. Luckily, Charlie happens to know Adam and, Ad and he's already verified Adam's identity. So, and Adam has signed a copy of Bill's key. So what that means is he can now give his the copy of his public key, that, um, Bill's key that Adam has to Charlie 
and Charlie doesn't ever have to meet Bill because Adam's already verified Bill and Charlie's already verified Adam, so it creates a web of trust. Ooh, yeah. Nice, right? So the final activity for this entire course is to try and get other people to use GPG and to build your own web of trust within your organization or your company or whatever you've got going on. Here are some other links covering uh, PGP and GPG. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. See ya.